Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films, back again with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Last time on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, we had Darby the Gambler Part 1, where basically we made it to Cairo and we were looking for the home of Dio. Uh, and we eventually found someone who did know. However, he was the stand user uh, Darby, who had the stand Osiris, and, well, he's a gambler. And basically, uh, I think it was something like... So, I kind of got this wrong in the last episode, and I realized this later, but uh, the stand Osiris has the ability to take someone's soul. And basically, the guy found it easiest to take someone's soul after they lose a game. So he uses his gambling combined with uh, his stand's ability to take a soul in order to be a very legitimate threat. And he takes Paul Nareff's soul, then Joseph faces him in a game and loses. And so Joseph loses his soul, and now it is up to Jotaro in a game of poker to win them back. So yeah, it's all pretty intense and actually really, really cool. And that's basically that, so the reaction is down in the description and in the pinned comment for your viewing pleasure. So let's go ahead and get into this episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Here we go. Holy Toledo. What a bluff, man. Only... Only, only a bluff that could be pulled off by Jotaro Kujo. No other character, I feel in existence, could pull off a bluff like that. Goodness. Goodness. That was insane. I mean, they say straight up. They say straight up, like, you know... The, the reason poker can be so popular is because of the betting and psychology about it, you know? And sure enough, that's what jo Jotaro uses to his advantage. Goodness. And he basically pulls what Darby pulled on Joseph, you know? Where Joseph, you know, realized there was no way to win, so that's what took his soul before he could even do anything. It's kind of what happened here. Holy crap. That was insane, man. Wow. Alrighty. That was episode 35, Darby the Gambler. Oh. Ah, I feel like I need to, like, get my poker chips. I actually do have some. Yeah, maybe. I have some. They're not in an easy place, but I'll go, I'll go fetch them real quick just to have them. Okay. I've got them in this freaking Seto Kaiba briefcase. Oh. I actually don't really play poker, but. I mean, it'd be interesting. I just never. I don't know. I never have reason to, I guess. Let me get out some chips. Uh, ba -da -ba, ba -da -ba. Some blue chips and some red chips. Oh man, should have had these out from the beginning. Huh. And the one black chip. I don't know if that means anything in poker. I I, I I've never really played poker. Man, I'd, I'd like to. I'd be. I'd probably be a terrible like. Like, I'd probably be horrible at bluffing, you know? I wouldn't be all calm and cool, you know? But I don't know. Maybe I could try it someday. But I just never have, so... Also, there's this one. This one specifically has a little hole in it, because it was, like, on a thing on the specific... Like, it was tied on the outside of the, like, briefcase when it was sold, basically. Anywho! Oh, what an intense game, man. What an intense game. I mean, it was, 
That was really, really insane. I like that it's still not even... Like, it's still not even the game, really, you know? Like, it wasn't just a standard... You know, I I'm thinking that, oh, this is going to be like Casino Royale. You know, we're going to get just this huge game of poker. But, no. Like, they bet, like, twice. They bet, like, twice, and then that was just kind of it, you know? Like, they didn't really... They didn't really play the game for a while. But it was all in... But in all fairness, like, it was all in that bet, you know? It was all in that bet. So... I have no idea if this sounds good on the microphone or not. Probably not. So, I should probably stop. Save your ears. They're just kind of fun to play with. But yeah, man oh man... Oh, oh, man. And that's the thing, you know, coming up with stuff that you can bet, you know? Coming up with stuff that you can bet. I mean, for a little bit, I was like, oh, man, what if he... Like, when I was like, oh, you need something to match Holly's soul. And, um... You need something to match Holly's soul. For a second, I thought he was just going to just offer up Dio's soul, you know? But the secret of Dio's stand worked, you know? Man, that's so crazy. So, so crazy. Okay, so we had a lot. There's a lot to kind of go over. Um, so, the first thing I wrote down, poker, obviously, and the deck. Uh, that was, that stuff was really interesting. Um, where, you know, you get a fresh deck and stuff like that, and they also had that Darby can actually, uh, Darby can actually, you know, tell just by feeling what cards they are, you know, which was really cool. Um, but also, you know, when you cut the deck in a specific way, Star Platinum can see that. Like, it makes me wonder, like, because Jotaro says, like, oh, my game is poker. And it's like, okay, how good was he before he had Star Platinum? Yeah, Because that's the thing. Most of this actually isn't about Star Platinum, you know? Most of this actually isn't about Star Platinum, because while he did see, you know, uh, he did see that, but then he saw, you know, the second deal. After that, though, it was just about his, you know, his resolution, basically, to, uh, to bluff, basically, until he beat Darby. So, um, so that's the thing, you know? Like, half of that wasn't even Star Platinum, it was just, uh, it was just, you know, having a, a good bluff so but we also did have that with uh with the the second deal which was interesting um because yeah like i wouldn't have thought of that but obviously star platinum can see that um also i did want to see real quick it's skipping ahead just a little bit um The point where he, After I'm finished with him, that poker where he lights the cigarette. I just wanted to see that real quick. Sounds like a plan. I'll see your bed with cockyoid soul. Wait, Jojo, you can't. Letting a man's soul without his knowledge is so uncouth. Well, it is kind of selfish. I do like that using Star Platinum to light a cigarette. And I swear to God, he fucking dabs to do that, so... Uh, but yeah, anyway. But we have the new dealer, which I like that... Um, you know, because I would have thought that, oh, well, you could have Abdal be the dealer. But he didn't end up doing that, instead using the kid. Which, that's the thing, it's like, okay, the kid and everyone in that bar basically uh, worked for Darby. But that just didn't matter. And that was the thing, it didn't matter what kind of hand Jotaro had, he just needed to do the bluff. Which is why he also didn't look at it, you know? Um, and then we had the whole thing with the chips, which was clever. You know, betting different parts of the soul, basically, in order to, um, you know, just as different bets. Because, yeah, what is poker without chips, you know? So splitting up the souls uh, was very interesting. I like that. Um, so, yeah, I like that. Uh, then we had the two pairs. 
again, just the first hand was interesting to, you know, basically just to give Darby that boost in confidence uh, to set up the bluff, you know? Uh, so that was interesting. You know, it's like, okay, he had, uh, what was it? I think it was kings and queens high to Jotaro's pair of twos. So Jotaro lost part of his soul. And I like, too, that, you know, it's like, okay, Jotaro, you know, then, you know, lost part of three chips of his soul. But then, you know, Darby can start wagering Jotaro's soul instead of uh, instead of Joseph and Abdal. He has to win his soul back, you know? So I like that. And then, yeah, we had, uh, basically we had Darby going all in and, you know, betting... Not only Jotaro's soul, but also Joseph, uh, Joseph and Polnareff's souls. And then, you know, forcing Jotaro to not only bet Abdal's soul, but also Kakyoin's soul. Which is pretty crazy, you know? So, so I did like that. I thought that was very, very clever. Because, um, yeah, honestly, it's like, okay, you know, they have, they have the chips. And it's like, okay, so the chips are, you know, the chips basically you know, equal the souls and stuff like that. And it's the same thing of just, you know, chips equaling money in normal poker. But I like that it's like, okay, you just need to find something to gamble. And for Jotaro, he can gamble, you know, Abdal, Kakyoin, and Holly souls. Whereas uh, with Darby, he has his own souls that he can gamble. As well as, you know, the only thing left for him after that to gamble is the the secret to the world, basically. So... Um, so yeah, that was really, really crazy. And I do like, I like Abdal being like, you know, look, I would not be a good poker player. You could read me like a book, but Jotaro, I have such confidence in him that if he says he needs to bet my soul, I trust him completely. Like I, I really did like that. Um, and I did cause it's interesting. Cause you know, then, you know, he starts to have a problem because, uh, because Kakyoin and Holly aren't there to willingly give their souls, basically. You know, he, he specifically asked for Abdal's soul, but he didn't specifically ask for theirs, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, but I did like that. Which at first I thought was like, well, could you bet Iggy's soul? But I guess the thing is that Iggy's soul is not really worth anything to Jotaro, so it's not really much of a bet, you know? Kakyoin, like, okay, this is, you know, not only one of the other Crusaders, but this is his friend, you know? Or Holly, like, you know, that's very important because she's his mother and stuff like that, you know? Like, but I like his reasoning, like, look, if I lose this, I'm gonna, she's gonna die anyway. So I need to, so it, it's fine, honestly, betting her soul, basically, if I know I'm going to win. So... Um, so that's the thing, you know, whereas with Iggy, for God's sake, I think Jotaro could take him or leave him. I mean, let's, let's all face it. Iggy has been the north side of useless this whole second half of the, of the, of the, uh, the part of Stardust Crusaders. So yeah, it's not really worth anything to bet Iggy's soul. So I hope that isn't annoying you guys too much. I'm trying to keep it, like, under the table so it doesn't... So hopefully maybe it's not too loud. Might be. I don't know. Well, I'll see if... I'll see by the dislikes if... Uh, if anyone, like, really hates me just continually uh, messing with chips here. And it's just fun, honestly. It's just fun to just kind of mess with them. So, yeah. But, yeah, going with that... That big gamble of Kakyoin and Holly's soul... Which is pretty crazy. And I wrote down psychology. Because that's the thing. They say right up top. Like look. This is a whole. The game basically. Comes in with psychology. You know. That's where the betting aspect comes in. And that's where the thrill comes in with poker. Is, is you know. The psychology between opponents. And that's the thing. Jotaro knows he needs to break Darby basically. In order to win. So. And that's also why he doesn't look at that hand. Even though, you know, uh, they rigged that hand to be horrible, he doesn't do anything because he needs... Because like he said, like, if I saw that hand, I probably would have freaked out. But, you know, he needed to keep up his confidence, basically. So, I do really like that. Um, and then, yeah, also, it's like, okay, so what is the equivalent of betting Holly's soul for Darby? And the equivalent is the secret to Dio's stand, the world. 
And I like how they figure out, you know, when he's like, oh, no, that, you know, they both they both figure out, okay, clearly he knows the secret of Dio's stand. So he can bet that. That's the thing. It's not like, you know, some of the others where it's like, oh, they don't really know what Dio's stand is, you know? Um, so I like that. Um, and I also like, you know, to kind of go back a little bit, I like how they said that... Um, I like how Darby said that it's like, you know, I'm not here because of Dio. I'm here because I'm a gambler and I want to do this, you know, which is interesting. He's not exactly, you know, even though he, you know, does mention Lord Dio and stuff like that, he's not one of the true believers like we've seen, which I like. I like that there is a distinction among our enemies of who is a, you know, drunk the Dio Kool-Aid servant and who's just there because, you know, either they were paid or... You know, they just want to be there, you know? And that's the thing with... Uh, and I guess there's even distinctions there. Like, you know, someone like Dan of Steel, he's like, oh, I was paid to do this or something like that. Whereas, you know, then you get Anyaba who's like, oh, Lord Dio, ah, oh, you know, that stuff. And then this guy who's like, well, he didn't need to pay me. I want to come do this, but not for him. I want to do this just because I'm a gambler, you know? So I do honestly like that distinction between them all. Like, it, it's it's a nice little interesting thing to sort of plug there. Uh, it really lets you get to know, I guess, the bad guys. So so I like that. We did not learn the secret of the world, unfortunately, um, and why it is so powerful. Um, but still, that was a really, really good bluff. And yeah, that bluff was just so much that it basically drove Darby insane, which was crazy. Um, but I really do like that, um, that he's he, like, he basically knew like there is, he knew there's no way that Jotaro could have one of the three hands possible in order to beat four Kings, but he was just so scared of Jotaro's confidence that it broke him. And this is a, you know, a world champion, the best gambler in the world, the, you know, the King of games himself. And he is broken by Jotaro's confidence, you know? And yeah, all in all, it was still a bluff. But a bluff that Darby was unable to call. So, I really like that. This was an incredible episode. Uh, definitely, I, I think one of my favorites, honestly. Like, after Anubis, I'd really have to go back and look at all the episodes to really figure them out. But... After Anubis, this may be one of my favorite episodes of Sardis Crusaders, so really do enjoy it, and I am curious to see where we are off to next time with Cairo. How, how who knows? Maybe we'll get Kakyoin back. Sorry, I keep doing it in front of the microphone. That's probably not good for your ears, but especially if you're headphone users, which I imagine a lot of you are. Uh, well, you know what? Here's the question. Uh... Uh, go ahead and leave in the comments, do you watch my videos with headphones on? Uh, and if you answer that question, I know you will have gotten to the end of the episode. So yeah. Uh, but that's basically it. Again, love this episode, and now I'm excited to see where we're going next. So with all that being said, I'm Alex from Seventh Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch more of my JoJo's Bizarre Adventure reactions, you can click on the playlist, you can subscribe if you haven't done that already, and be sure you hit that notification bell. You can support me on Patreon and follow me on social media, links below in the description. See you guys later.